Hello guys, welcome back to another Android app development tutorial. In this video, we are going to learn about what are the life cycle methods, life cycle events of an activity. So during the lifespan of an activity, the activity goes through different life cycle events. So you have to follow these life cycle events for making a good application. So by following this life cycle callback, you can create a crash free application, you can improve the user experience. You can reduce the battery uh, usage by your application. So there are there is many advantages by following the life cycle callback of an Android application. So from this image, uh, from this picture, you can you will get the basic concepts of what are the life cycle callback methods of an Android activity. There are six methods: on create, on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, and on destroy. Uh, there is one more method on restart. So, during the lifespan of an activity, the activity goes through these methods. So, uh, now we can discuss each of them. When you open an activity for the first time, the system called the on create method. So, this is the only method you must implement in your activity classifier. That's why Android Studio uh, automatically add this method to each activity classifier. So, within this method, you have to place, you have to initialize all the variables, you have to initialize the adapters, you have to attach the adapters to the list, uh, you have to prepare the data binding library, etc. So, that is the purpose of onCreate method. So, within the onCreate method, you have to start, you have to initialize the variables and parameters for the activity. So, after finishing the execution of this method, the activity is in the create state. It is not visible to the user. It is in the create state. After finishing the on create method, the activity comes to the on start method. The on, within the on start method, the system prepare the user interface for the activity. It prepare the layout for the activity. So after finishing the execution of this method, the activity is in the start state. Now the activity is visible to the user but it is not interactive. User can view the activity, but it is not interactive. Soon after finish the on start method, the system call the on resume method callback. <coughs> so after finish the execution of the on resume method, the activity is visible and interactive to the user. So after finishing the on resume method, the activity is in the resumed state and the activity continue in the resumed state until some interrupt happens. So now the activity is visible and interactive, interactive to the user. If there is an interrupt happens, that means if there is a phone call is arrived, if the user move to some other activity, in all these cases that is an interrupt for the current running activity. In that case, the activity called the on post method, that means the activity is going to the background. So, within the on post method, you have to uh, you, ha you have to clear the system resources. For example, if the if the activity using a camera using a camera resource, within the on post method, you can release the camera, you can disconnect the network, etc. So, all these things you have to done within the on post method. But there is one important thing: don't do any long running background task within the on post method. For example. Don't put any database operations within the on post method because the on post method is very short. So, if you put a database operation, a long running network calls within the on post method, that may cause your application to crash. So, you have to put the long running task within the on stop method. That is very important. So, within the on post method, you can release resources. Don't start any new resources. Don't don't make any long running process within the on post method. So now the activity is in the post state. That means the activity is visible to the user, but it is not interactive to the user. So here uh, there is two conditions happens. Suppose so the, the device has less memory, some other applications need more memory. In that case, the system may automatically kill that process. In such situation, if the user again come to the activity, the system call the onCreate method again. 
and there is another situation now the activity is partially visible to the user now the user come back to the resume post the activity in that case the system called the on resume method again now after on post and if the activity is no longer visible to the user in that case the system called the on stop method you can place the long running task long running background task within the on stop method so after finishing the on stop method the activity is in the stopped state it is not no longer visible to the user but it is still in the memory now if the user come back to the activity again the system called the on restart method after finish the on restart method the system called the on start method again it comes to on resume and the activity come into the running state and here there is another thing happens if there is more memory needed by the system the system may kill the app process in that case if the user again come back to the activity it is called the on create method so within on stop method there is another thing happen if the system kill the activity the system called the on destroy method and if the user kill the activity by calling the finish finish the method finish method again the system called the on destroy method on destroy callback method and the activity comes into a shutdown so this is the life cycle events of an activity so you have to follow this life cycle events for making a better android application by following these life cycle methods you can improve the user experience of your application you can avoid you can reduce many app crashes okay so now we can uh, check these life cycle events with an example so here i already create an android application that contain three activities i will run, now i run the application so we have an activity called activity a so now we are going to check the life cycle events for the activity a so now come to activity a so here there is only one life cycle events is now available that is the on create method okay now i am going to implement each of the life cycle callback methods in that activity now i am going to create the on start method so now try now for tracking the life cycle callback I am going to put some log cat message here. First specify a tag for the message. Activity A. Life cycle. Activity A life cycle. And the message is in on create. Now I am going to override the on start callback here also i put the logcat message so we can track the life cycle events in on start so here i implement all the life cycle callback method on resume on post on stop on destroy on restart i implement all the life cycle callback methods of the activity so now i run the application again okay now comes to logcat window now start activity a now i start activity a now we can check the log message so we can use the tag here activity a okay so when i start activity a first it is called the on create method after on create method the system called the on start method now the activity in start state then after it is called the on resume method now the activity in resumed state and it is interactive to the user okay now i am going to move the activity into post the state for that i hold the home button now the google assistant is appear now the activity is still visible to the user but it is not interactive now the activity in post the state now we will check it again i clear the log message 
open that activity again okay now the activity in the resumed state now I hold the home button now it is in post state now I come back to the activity again so when I come back to the activity again the system called the on resume method now the activity in resumed state now check other condition now I come back to another I am going back to another activity I come back to the main activity home activity in this case the system called the on post method so the activity is no longer visible to the user so the system called the on stop method and for saving memory the system called the on destroy method now the activity is not in the background it is completely removed from the memory so that is happens when you click the back button now I open the activity again it is it called the on create method on start on resume ok now in now here we are going to test another situation now I am going to the home page of the device so in this case the system called the post the on post method the activity enter into post the state and the activity is no longer visible to the user so it is called the on stop method but still the activity in the background it is running in the memory so we can come back to the activity again I open the recent application now come back to the same activity again in this case the system called the on restart callback method after finish the on restart callback method it is called the on start method then called the on resume method now the activity in the resumed state and is interactive to the user so this is how we manage the life cycle events of an activity I hope you understand the concept of activity life cycles for getting more Android tutorial updates please subscribe this channel now thank you for watching see you in the next episode